watching this free video tutorial which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we learn about Corona hair material. Hair material is a physically accurate, easy to use material that allows for realistic rendering of human and animal hair and fur and feather. For this lesson, I'll be using this scene, which is a commercial model that I bought from cgtrader.com. Uh, the model called long hair for production render in Octane 3D model. Obviously, I won't be able to provide this model with the project files. Instead of that, I'm going to share with you another scene so you can practice what you learn here about Corona hair material. I'll show you that scene in a, a few moments, but for now, select the hair mesh and open up the material editor. Let's uh, create a new hair material, new Corona hair material and assign it to the selection. And select the Corona hair material itself. Corona hair material is really intuitive and user-friendly, even though there are a lot of parameters here, but the three melanin values are the ones to look for. Melanin, melanin, and random melanin. And you can achieve all types of realistic hair colors with only these parameters and without having to touch any other parameters in this material. The most important one among these three is melanin. Let's run the interactive rendering. and arrange these windows a bit. Melanin is the pigment that gives human skin, hair and eyes their colors. Dark skinned people have more melanin in their skin than light skinned people. The melanin parameter is used to generate natural hair colors by controlling the amount of melanin in hair. Uh, colors will range from white at zero to blonde at around 0.25 to brown at around 0.5 brunette at around 0.75 to black at 1 Now let me show you 11 renders with melanin values set to 0 to 1 with 0.1 increments. So this is the render with melanin set to 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 1. So as you can see, by simply adjusting this melanin value here from 0 to 1, we get all of these hair colors. From 0 to 1, we go from white to blonde to brown to brunette and to black and everything in between. For now, let's set it to 0.75. The next one is melanin or melanin redness, which controls the redness of the hair pigments. At zero, we get no red pigments among the hair strands, and as we increase it, we get more and more red pigments. Now, let me show you three renders with fail melanin value set to 0 0.5 and 1. So, this is what we get with zero no red pigments with 0.5 immediately more red pigments in the hair strands and with one we get this ginger hair color let's set it to zero for now
Then we have random melanin, which randomizes the amount of melanin in hair fibers, which in turn result in a more random hair colors for the hair strands. So at zero, we get no randomization and all the hair fibers will get the defined melanin value. And as we increase it, different hair colors will get different melanin values. Let me show you a few renders with random melanin set to 0, 0.5 and 1. At 0, we get no randomization. Uh, then at uh, 0.5, here you can see the randomization will happen around the defined melanin value, which is 0.75 for now. And then 1 which we have this full randomization. Some hair strands are white, some are blonde, some are black, some are brown, and so on. Generally speaking, it's a good idea that whatever melanin value that you have defined, to add a bit of randomization, something maybe between 0.1 to 0.3, just to add a bit more realism to the hair shader. Let's set the random melanin to zero for now. Before discussing the rest of the parameters in the color section, let's move on to the next important parameter, which is colored reflection glassiness or the secondary reflection lobe along the hair strands. And this is the main value that determines how matte or shiny the hair is. The closer the colored reflection glassiness is to one, the shinier the hair. Now let me show you a few renders with different glassiness values of 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. With 0.2 we get this very matte rough hair shader. With 0.5 the hair is still pretty rough but shinier compared to before. And with 0.9, now we get this shiny, silky hair. So it really depends on what you're looking for. And then based on that, you would choose a, a proper reflection glassiness volume. Then we have this color reflections tint, and this should always be kept at white for physically plausible results. I have created every possible hair colors with this shader, and I have never changed this to any other color. We have this colorless reflection glassiness, which controls the reflection glassiness of the colorless or primary reflection lobe along the hair. Let me set the uh, colored reflection glassiness to zero and set the colorless reflection glassiness to zero as well. And now we get this very matte reflections. And if set to one, Now you can see these shinier patches along the hair strands and those are the primary or colorless reflections. Generally speaking, the colorless reflections are supposed to be rougher compared to color reflections. And as I mentioned, the dominating value that controls the shininess or matteness of the hair strands is the colored reflection glassiness. Let's set the colored reflection glassiness to 0.5 and colorless reflections glassiness to zero. Now back to the color section, we have this level value and tint color. Uh, these control absorption inside hair fibers, which gives her its color as light scatters around. The level and the tint color here multiply each other. So if you set the level to zero or tint color to black, we get a totally black color because the hair strands will now absorb all the incoming lights. The tint color should stay at white when you use the melanin, pheomelanin and random melanin values to determine the hair color. But as the name suggests, the tint color tints the calculated color of the hair strands from melanin, pheomelanin and random melanin. If I set the tint color to a very saturated pink color, you notice not much has changed in the render and that is because the melanin value is about 0.75. Uh, 
right now and we have this dark pigments in our hair fiber so when the melanin value is too high the tint color if it is anything other than black and white like right now won't affect the coloration of the hair fibers uh, that much but um, look as I decrease the melanin value to something like 0.35 now, as you can see, that blonde color that results from a melanin value like 0.35 gets tinted with a defined tint color, which is pink. We can tint it with something like blue, green, yellow, and so on. Now, if I set the melanin to zero, so we get just white from our melanin, the defined tint color appears much more evidently. You can use the tint color in conjunction with the transmission tint and diffuse color to simulate any imaginable hair color. Uh, we talk about that in a moment. Let's set the tint color to its default white, which is what you want to be in most cases. And let's set the melanin value to 0.35 for now. Then we have transmission tint, which colors the light transmission through the hair fibers. And the physically accurate value is white here as well. Let's try a pink color. A blue color. A green color. an orange color and now set it back to white. Let's set the colored reflection glassiness to 0.9. We have this self-explanatory softness value uh, the value of 1 will result in a soft hair, and as we decrease the value, uh, we get uh, basically, I would say, rougher hair or uh, less evenly distributed light. Let me show you two renders with softness set to 1 and uh, 0. At zero, we get this um, rougher looking hair compared to when the softness is set to one and we have this even distribution of light. Let's set it back to one. We have this highlight shift, which is the angle of scales on the hair fiber. It shifts the primary and secondary or colorless and colored reflections away from the perfect mirror direction or the root of the hair strands, or simply put, shifts the reflection highlights on the hair strands. Zero will result in the colorless and colored reflection highlights having the exact same position along the hair strands. And as you increase it, um, obviously the maximum value is five here, the colored reflections will move away and separate from the colorless reflections. You really don't need to touch this parameter at all. Um, just make sure to set it to the default value of two. And let me set the melanin back to 0.75. We have this glint strength, which controls the strength of random glints. And by increasing the volume, we will have more and more random glints throughout the hair strands, which makes the hair to appear more damaged. Now, let me show you a few renders with different glint strength values. The first one is set to zero. Then point two. then 
and finally one. So by increasing this value, the glittering random strands will stand out more and it makes the hair to look more damaged in general. We have IOR, which we are pretty familiar with from previous lessons. And here for hair strands, the value of 1.55 will be a good value. And as we increase the IR value, therefore getting more even reflections across the different angles, the result will be more reflective, more wet hair shader. Let me show you a few renders with different IR values. The first one is with 1.2. Then 1.55, 1.8, and finally 2.1. As we increase the IR value, we get stronger and more visible reflections. Let me set it back to the default value of 1.55. Then we have this diffuse level and color. These values control the diffuseness of the hairs, with zero giving fully specular scattering and one fully diffuse scattering. For typical realistic hair, no diffuse component is required. For dirty or damaged or dyed hair, you can utilize the diffuse component. Let's try a purplish color with the RGB values of 51, 31, and 126 for the diffuse color. Now we get this diffuse, non-reflective dyed hair. And this diffuse level controls how much the final hair shader will be diffuse-based or reflection-based. When set to 1, it will be diffuse-based, and as we decrease diffuse level, we incorporate more of the specular-based melanin values. Let me set the melanin to 1 as well here. Now let me show you a few renders with different diffuse levels and see how it works. When diffuse level set to zero, there would be no diffuse component to the hair shader. At 0.25, we start to incorporate that defined purple color. At 0.5, we obviously get more diffuse component. At 0.75, uh, you can see the final shader here is mostly coming from the diffuse component, but there is still other contributions as well. And at diffuse level of one, we only have the diffuse components. Now let's set the diffuse level to zero for now. We have opacity, which obviously controls the transparency of the hair strands. At white, we get opaque hair fibers, and at zero or black, we get fully transparent hair fibers. And setting the transparency to anything lower than one will result something like 0 0.8, 0 0.85, something like that, 0 0.9, will result in softer looking hair, but the render will take significantly longer. It will be much more computationally expensive. Finally, we have this GI simplification amount, which is set to 0.5 by default. Uh, zero means a precise global illumination will be calculated for the hair strands, uh, which obviously leads to more physically accurate results, but with more noise and longer under time. And as we increase this value, less precise GI will be computed for the hair strands, but it would be much faster. The default value of 0.5 should give us a good balance of quality and speed. Now let's create a few hair shaders. For most cases, you just play around with the melanin value and get any hair color that you wish. But nonetheless, I'm gonna go ahead and create a few examples that might need incorporating diffuse and tint colors as well. For the first example, let's create an auburn or dark ginger hair color. I'm gonna create a new Corona hair material and assign it to the hair mesh. 
For this, I would set the melanin to a value around 0.8. Increase the fill melanin to 0.9 to add those red pigments. Now to get that specific color that you have in mind and you're trying to achieve, if you couldn't kind of get the exact same thing with the melanin and fill melanin, you can obviously uh, start working with a diffuse color. In this case, change the diffuse color to this orangish red color with the RGB values of 170. Forty four and sixteen and decrease the diffuse level to something like point three. Now the hair color is very close to what we want. We can work with the glossiness values to determine whether to have a sharp or rough hair shader. Let me stop the render and show you the final high resolution render for this uh, particular hair color. You can see it's quite nice and realistic. For the next example, let's just exaggerate the redness of the hair by using a bit more redder hue for the diffuse color. So let me duplicate the shader and rename it to something like Auburn Red. Increase the fill melanin to one. Change the diffuse color to the saturated red with the RGB values of 97, five and five and set the diffuse level to 0.4 and now we get this nice hair color as well let me show you the high resolution render as well for this one you can actually take a look at this uh, renders in the render output folder of the project files for this course now let's move on to a simple blonde hair color so i'm going to create a new corona hair material and rename it to blonde depending on how much light or dark the blonde color that you're looking for is uh, you can use values from 0.1 to 0.45 as the melanin value in this case i'm going to use 0.25 Add a bit of fill melanin, probably something like 0.1. A bit of randomness at around 0.15. And for this particular hair color, I would like to have a rough reflections. It really depends on you. So let's set the glossiness to 0.3 for now. And here is our blonde hair color. Let me show you a high resolution render. Actually, I have another render uh, from this uh, blonde hair color, which I've used another HDRI, which is this one. Let me show you, as you can see. The lighting is a bit more extreme here. And for darker hair colors, you simply increase the melanin value to something closer to one, right? Um, let's try a simple burnette. I'm gonna create a new hair material and name it burnette. Change the melanin to something like 0.75. Fill melanin to something like 0.2. randomness to something like 0.25 and that's it
let me show you the higher resolution render now let's try a bit more extreme examples I'm gonna try a wine colored hair shader the first thing when creating this kind of dyed hair colors is to change the diffuse color so let's change the create a obviously new corona hair material and assign it to the hair mesh and um, I'm gonna change the diffuse color to a dark purple color with the RGB values of 37 4 and 11 then I'm gonna change the transmission tint and the tint color to a brighter version of the same purple shade so change the transmission tint and tint to this purple color with the RGB values of uh, 77 0 and 29 and now you can use the melanin value to get different shades of this wine colored herb the closer we are to 0 we get brighter shades and as we increase the melanin towards 1 we get darker and darker shades In this case, let's set the melanin to 0.9. And to make it a bit more realistic, let's increase the uh, random melanin to 1. And that is our wine colored hair shader. Let me show you the higher resolution render as always very nice next let's create a reddish orangish hair color based on this wine colored hair so let me just duplicate this shader and assign it to the hair mesh so first let's change the diffuse to a saturated orange with the RGB values of 110, 6, and 0. Now let's decrease the diffuse level to 0.4. Change the tint and transmission tint to the saturated red with the RGB values of 89, 10, and 11. I'm going to set the melanin value to zero to get a brighter shade of this red orange hair color. Increase the fill melanin and random melanin to one as well. And let's for fun make this one a bit shinier by increasing the glossiness to 0.8. And there you have it. Let me show you the high resolution render of this example as well. So let's go for a green shader. Just create a new Corona hair material and assign it. First, let's set the diffuse color to this green color with the RGB values of 85. 110 and 32 and decrease the diffuse level to 0.5 and I set the transmission tint and tint color to this green color with the RGB values of 124 148 and 73 just a bit desaturated compared to the diffuse color I'm going to set the melanin 2.1 to get a bright shade of this green. 
random melanin to one. I think for these kind of color dyed uh, hair examples, random melanin of one will really result in a nicer, more realistic render. And let's go for a matte shader by decreasing the glassiness to 0.3. Let me show you the final render as well. Here is this example. Now, let's create a new Corona hair material and assign it and try this time a gray hair color. Uh, for this, I would set the melanin to zero. Change the diffuse color to a gray color with the RGB values of, just set a value to uh, 139 and uh, decrease the diffuse level to 0.2. Now copy the diffuse color to the tint and transmission tint as well. The same gray color should be just fine. Fill melanin and random melanin can be set to zero here, but I'm gonna increase the glint strength to one and this really gives a nice realistic look to this kind of gray hair colors. And um, this is our final shader. Let me show you a higher resolution render again. And finally, let's create a new Corona material, a hair material and uh, assign it to the hair mesh. And this time we'll create a simple black hair shader. For black hair, you would obviously put melanin to one or something very close to one. To add a bit more variations, let's set the fill melanin and random melanin to 0.2. And that's it really. Let me show you the high resolution render. So this is the render in our normal lighting, but we also have this one that is in more extreme lighting situation. Very nice. You can see in this extreme example how this uh, how this film melanin wally that we set to point to kind of shows up and becomes more obvious. We get this kind of hint of red here. Okay, that's good. As I mentioned, I won't be able to provide this current scene. So let's open up the scene that you guys will be able to access, which is 0310 uh, hair material. We have this simple pillow with hair and fur modifier assigned to it. For the lighting, an HDRI has been assigned to the environment. If you open up the material editor, you can create a new Corona hair material. I'm gonna set its melanin to 0.2. And in order to assign it to the hair and fur, you need to open up the custom shader rollout in the hair and fur modifier. Enable apply shader and connect the Corona hair material there. And now if you run the interactive rendering, You will be able to adjust the hair shader as you wish and experiment with it and practice what you have learned in this lesson. In this video, we learned about Corona hair material. See you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.